The Today Show, weekday mornings from 7 to 9, only on 14. Tonight's basketball action between the University of Evansville Aces and the Fighting Sycamores of Indiana State University is brought to you in part by your Coca-Cola General Bottlers of Evansville, by the good people of Kenny Kent, by Old National Bank, your bank for life, and by the Red and White Stores. Now at courtside, here's Mike Blake and Dean Webster. It's U of E's oldest rivalry. Tonight, it's the 107th meeting between the Aces and the Sycamores. Hi, everybody. Mike Blake along with Dean Webster. Should be fun tonight at the stadium. Dean, the Sycamores are here. They look like athletes. They're very big, but the guy that runs the show is the little guy, the point guard. Six foot tall, Tony Twitty, averaging 19 points, three points a game through three games. He was the leading scorer in the first two. He also is the team leader in assists, so he's the guy that really makes it go. But they've got some guys that can go to the boards. Of course, rebounding has been the problem for the Aces. When you speak of rebound, there's Larry Bush, but also a familiar name named Frazier, huh? Benji Frazier from Mount Carmel and Wabash Valley Junior College last year. Of course, the people in Illinois will remember him. He's now at one of the starting forward positions for the Sycamores. What about the Aces? Again, Jim Cruz has indicated he's going to change that starting lineup. What do you expect? Well, he's got Kevin Haddock back in there with Scott Hafter in the guard position, and he's got Brian Hill back in at the center position in place of Jeff Warning. I think that's obviously just trying to get somebody in there that can come up with some rebounds. He thinks Brian Hill can do the job along with Larry Brand and Marty Simmons on the front line tonight. And Curtis Jackson is healthy. Curtis Jackson had the hives against Sam Houston State, but Curtis's hives have subsided a little bit. He's ready to go, and so are the rest of the Aces. And so are we, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to have you with us. Aces basketball is back, and it's proud to be back. We're proud to have it here on Channel 14. Don't go away. The introduction of the starting lineups coming up right after this. Somebody bounced a check. Wow. Oops, there's another one. Too bad they're not with Old National. Look, nobody's perfect. That's why it's smart to have your checking with Old National. They'll keep you covered with your savings or check credit, so a little boo-boo's no big deal. It's your bank for a living, your bank for life. Old National. Bad a boy, Bentley. Mm -hmm. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. I wish that I could be a star in the sky and some toys for everybody to be nice and be friends and never fight each other. May all your wishes come true. Season's greetings from your local bottler of Coca-Cola. Christmas is a very special season, a time for family and friends, a time to reflect upon the past year. Christmas is a time for sharing. At this Christmas, the folks at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar Food Stores would like to remind you that the greatest gift of all is the gift of friendship. Thanks for being our friends this past year and in the years to come. Here's our wish to you for the most joyous and blessed Christmas ever from all of us at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar Food Stores. Kenny Kent Chevrolet Mazda Volvo presents a consumer awareness announcement. Your sales tax deduction is slipping away. December 31st, 1986 will be the last day you can purchase a new or used car, truck, or custom van and deduct the sales tax. Depending on model selected, your sales tax deduction could be as much as $1,500. If you've been thinking about purchasing a vehicle, Kenny Kent asks you to stop by today and look at their extensive selection and take advantage of the sales tax deduction. Because when it's gone, The Aces come into this contest with a record of 2-0. Indiana State has a record of 3-0. U of E has, of course, come in with some very fine, impressive scoring, 85 points per game. But the Sycamores, equally impressive, have beaten Westmont College, William Penn, and also Ball State. We're ready now for the introduction of the starting lineups. For that, we go to the PA announcer, Mr. John McCauley. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Roberts Stadium for tonight's game between the Indiana State University Sycamores and your University of Evansville Aces. Here are the starting lineups. First for the Sycamores. At forward, a six-foot-six-inch junior from Springfield, Illinois, 
Number 22, Benji Frazier. At forward, a six foot six inch sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee. Number 23, Darian Applewhite. At center, a six foot eight inch junior from Chicago, Illinois. Number 40, Larry Bush. At guard, a six foot junior from Wichita, Kansas. Number 10, Tony Twitty. And at guard, a six foot five inch sophomore from Chicago, Illinois. Number 21, Chris Harris. The head coach of the Sycamores is Mr. Larry Green. And now, the starting lineup for your University of Evansville Aces. At forward, a six foot seven inch freshman from Wheaton, Illinois. Number 44, Larry Brand. At forward, a six foot six inch junior from Lawrenceville, Illinois. Number 50, Marty Simmons. At center, a six foot seven inch freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. Number 42, Brian Hill. At guard, a six foot four inch sophomore from Noblesville, in Indiana. Number three, Scott. Hafner. And at guard, a six foot five inch freshman from Columbus, Ohio. Number 21, Kevin Haddock. The Aces assistant coaches are Steve Bennett, Will Ray, Dave Skabinski, and Woody Wilson. The Aces head coach is Jim Cruz. And the officials for tonight's game, the tri trio from the MCC, Chuck Wyckoff. He's going out towards midcourt. There in the top of your picture is Steve Nikolarot. And at the other end of the court, from where the Sycamores will come out, is Dan Taylor. Some interesting comparisons in the starting lineup, Dean well, Webster. Well, I think what we're going to have is, is how well Scott Hafner is going to be able to handle Tony Twitty. Twitty at six foot, uh, very quick, leads the team in assists, but the coaching staff feels like Scott Hafner can do the job. I thought they might be starting Haddock to put on Twitty, but they say, no, we're going to go with Hafner and see how he does and hope he doesn't get in foul trouble early. And, of course, this inside game might be as strong to Sam Houston State. They don't have the big guy uh, like Sam Houston State did in Pearson, but uh, these guys all go to the boards very well. They sure do. Woody Wilson told us just a few moments ago, he was the one that scouted him. He said, I said, what scares you most about them? He said, the way they attack the board. And he said, they uh, again, they have that, like their coach, Ron Green, who is very persistent. Uh, so are the Sycamores. Nice to have you with us. As you can see, a fine crowd here at Robert Stadium. In this great rivalry, the Aces come in, as I mentioned, unbeaten. So are the Sycamores. It's UE's best start since 82-83. They haven't been 3-0 since 80-81. But to get to 3-0, it's going to be a tough task. Brian Hill going up against Benji Fraser, controlled by the Aces. Scott Hafner will bring it across. I think Hill might have got that one on the way up, but no call. Haddock back out to Hafner. Hafner averaging 21 points a game. Simmons leading the Aces with 27 points plus. Nice pass underneath to Kevin Haddock. The Sycamores started out man to man and they're really looking for Marty Simmons. Marty Simmons went outside and Kevin Haddock went inside and was wide open. Tony Twitty, who is shooting not only 50% from the floor, he's 50% from the three point range and a foul on an aggressive Kevin Haddock. Jim Cruz talks to his man. Haddock's in there to play defense, and he got a little over-aggressive getting his second start in a row. Did not play at all in the first game against Montana State, then got the call against Sam Houston State. He gets the call again tonight. I know the team was concerned when Haddock had, they thought maybe a stress fracture, Dean, early in preseason, but it's good to see the kid out there. He is, a, he is one of the finest athletes on the Aces, and again, only a freshman. This is Woody on the baseline. No good, strong rebound. And the shot was missed by Applewhite, controlled by Brian Hill. Scott Hafner to Simmons. 
Hafner will try his first shot, and Uri has a four to nothing lead. When Scott Hafner can get his feet settled underneath him, he's a very good jump shooter from that range. He's shooting 47%. They leave Harris alone. A foul. The basket it did not go in. And a foul on UE. Chris Harris with the drive. He's more known for his defensive prowess. As Scott. As the foul is committed, as number 21, Harris goes to the line. Harris had Harris had nine points against the Aces, and that was the second foul on Scott Haddock. Kevin Haddock has two. He also has two points. Four nothing Aces. And Harris, who is averaging eight points a game, puts it in. Harris is out of Chicago, Martin Luther King High School. He has very long arms. And they're more of a factor on the defensive end. So keep an eye on him. As Haddock and Hafner bring it up, Hafner wants it back. The Sycamores won at Ball State by a bucket, by a, actually by one point, a three-pointer by Twitty the other night. UE has still been at home. And this is their third home game. They are, of course, unbeaten. And they've already scored more points in their first two games than they did all last year in individual games and a foul as Hafner goes up he will go to the line Apple White very quick he tried to get the steal on that on Scott Hafner but Hafner was in the act of shooting I don't know if they're going to give him two probably before the play here comes Hafner driving to the bucket Scott really looking for the shot uh, tonight looks like he uh, maybe even a little bit more tonight than he in the previous two games he will not as we come back live it'll be inbounded Huey with a four to two lead after to Simmons, Ron Green said the two biggest differences with UE, a three-point shot are Simmons and Hafner, as Hafner's three-pointer falls short. You'll see a lot of strong defense. UE has playing very good defense. They wanted a five-second violation. 30 seconds on the shot clock, 20. Traveled, and it's a turnover to the Aces. He really motors, doesn't he, Dean? He's very quick. Uh, I asked the coaching staff, is he like a Darren Fitzgerald or a Carl Golston? Is he that type of player? They said, no, but he's just a real good athlete. He hasn't got quite the explosive quickness, but they said he's still a very quick player. He's out of Wichita Heights, Wichita. Played at Coffeeville Community College, which has produced a lot of fine ball players. Had it. Fine shot by Kevin Haddock. I think we're going to see a lot of Kevin Haddock over the next four years, Mike. Haddock with his fourth point. Aces back up by four, 6-2. Down the lane goes Harris. Draws a foul. There was no basket. And the foul on Brian Hill. It's going to be such a plus that the Aces can get some points out of Haddock. He's basically in there for, for defense, but he isn't. Uh, he's also a good shooter from the baseline. Harris will go back to the line. Dion Campbell just came into the lineup. He's a 6'5 uh, junior, only averaging 2.3, but he's very quick. He's got four steals this season, only 26 minutes of play, so he's got very good hands, and he's a good defensive player. ISU is shooting only 62% from the line, as you pointed out on the before the game, Dean. The Aces, one of their strengths has been their free throw shooting. Harris, very fine ball player out of Chicago who won a slam dunk contest with some of the greatest talent in the country in an Aces All-Star game. Misses on both, but the Sycamores almost got the rebound. Larry Bush couldn't control it. Here comes Hafner. Aces still by four. 6-2 here in the early going. Here's Larry Brand, and a rebound by the Sycamores. Brand didn't miss that shot too many times. He's going to hit it more often than not. Into the midsection of the offense goes Benji Frazier with his first contribution. And it's 6-4. to four. ISU back within two. Marty Simmons, a lot of people from Lawrenceville, of course, were coming down. We were told by bus for tonight's game. Three-point shot, it's no good. Great tip by Haddock, but it doesn't fall. 
Haddock again has tremendous jumping ability, and we saw it there, but the ball wouldn't drop. Down, nice pass, and the basket. Hitting inside to Darian Applewhite, and it's a tied ball game. 16 and a half remaining in the first half. Simmons draws a crowd, loses it, and a foul on ISU. Marty Simmons goes to the bucket. So very strong, Mike. 13 of 14 from the free throw line, so when he gets there, he's probably going to make them. He gets the step. He gets a step on Campbell, and uh, Campbell trying to move over in front of him commits the foul. Still 6-6. Six, six. Baseball over to Marty Simmons. The Aces have 30, a lot of time on the shot clock. They look a little Down low, Simmons, nice play to Haddock. I was about ready to say the Aces look a little disorganized with that zone, and Haddock breaks free for the second time inside. Deion Campbell calling the shots. He's out top. This is Applewhite with a basketball. ISU, like Evansville, has not had much respect in the preseason polls in the conference on a strong drive by Chris Harris. They are picked to finish last in the MVC. The Aces are picked to finish sixth in the MCC. But both teams are undefeated tonight. 8-8 the score. Mike Blake along with Dean Webster. Nice to have you with our first telecast, Aces Basketball, here on WFIE. Larry Brand from the corner. Brian Hill and Larry Bush, two strong men, go up for the ball. There's a lot of strength between those two players. And a foul on Smith. Let's take another, on Hill, rather. Let's take another look. Well, you see Bush getting the inside position there, and Brian Hill just coming over his back along with Campbell. Timeout, 15-14, remaining in the first half. 8-8, eight, eight. we're coming right back. Tommy, guess what? What? He was here. He knows. Oh. Come on, come on. Even he knows Sprite won the taste test. Coca-Cola Classic and Sprite want you to be it. Win a laser tag game kit on a trip to the national championships. Details at a store where you buy Coca-Cola Classic and Sprite. At Old National Bank, the cost of money just went down. Introducing Home Equity, the line of credit that's yours at an incredibly low 6%. The only loan that gives you all these advantages. Home equity. The biggest thing to hit banking in a long, long time. From who else but Old National Bank? There you see part of the crowd. They're expecting, they thought 8,500, Dean. They had 7,000 preseason or pregame tickets sold. They should have it. It looks like a nice crowd. A few more than 8,500 in Bloomington, Indiana today to see the uh, Wildcats and the Hoosiers go at it. The uh, Hoosiers winning that one 71-66. Pass along another score here. Xavier of the MCC beat Ohio Dominican. Uh, first I looked at that, I thought it was Old Dominion, but it's Ohio Dominican 101-69. to And congratulations to the UE Lady Aces. They're 64-62 winners over Akron today. So uh, there's the scores up today for you. The Xavier Musketeers, of course, will be coming and speaking of uh, Kentucky, Chris, uh, we saw a great Rex Chapman in action today. The kid has arrived. Sycamores with the ball. We're tied 8-8. Applewhite. And he quickly gives ISU the lead. Applewhite with his fourth point. It's 10-8. We're just under 15 minutes to go. Hafner. Campbell brings it down. Up in a hurry. This is Harris. Good body control, and in it goes. Chris Harris. They talk about... ISU being good on the secondary break, let alone the fast break. What does Cruz mean? Well, a secondary break is when you don't have the shot actually coming down three on two or two on one. It's when you stop and take a look and somebody posts up underneath. 
no, Marty, boast, no boasting up there, though, for Marty Simmons. Marty Simmons counters. It's now 12 to 10. UE back within two. That's Simmons' first basket. Down low. Good position in the basket by Benji Frazier. We're going to get a substitute. Curtis Jackson coming in momentarily. Indiana State continues to shoot uh, within six or eight feet from the bucket. If that continues, the Aces are going to be in real trouble in this game. Simmons trying again. And again, getting the rebound. ISU, the ball is lost by Larry Bush. They're fortunate because they, again, they had position, Dean. I mean, UE is fortunate they didn't lose it there. Well, Jim Cruz says we get our hands on balls, but we don't get the rebound. And what he means is, is we'll, we'll have position. Uh, the ace, an ace will go up and grab a hold of it, but he can't bring it down. He kind of bobbles a little bit, and the other guy is maybe a little stronger, takes it away from him. Kevin Haddock, the ace's leading scorer thus far with six points, comes out. Curtis Jackson is in, and he has the basketball. Ace is still trailing 14-10. Hafner. And control by the Sycamores. Turnaround shot, no good. And the putback battled around control. So right now, Indiana State winning the battle of the boards as Bush and Moore both had shot attempts that didn't go. Campbell. Lee Moore tries to get it low, stolen by, by Brand, and a foul on, I believe, Larry Bush. I think they may call it on Moore. Uh, Number 40. No, they, they're going to call it on Bush. Uh, Moore thought maybe it was on him. He was the one cringing, but uh, Bush is the one that threw it away. Could have called it on either one of them. ISU with its third foul. Aces have committed four. They try to get back within two again. Curtis Jackson. Here he is with his first attempt. Gets his own rebound. Up he goes. A foul. Offensive foul. Curtis apparent. Nope. No basket. And that's going to bring a, as you can tell, quite a an adverse reaction from the crowd. Here I, it is. I think that was probably a pretty good call. Let's see if the man is set here as Curtis goes up. Pretty good call by the official. And in that situation, you're not going to get the bucket called. The fans don't like it here, but I think that's probably a pretty good call, Mike. Jim Cruz expressing. If looks could kill. That's right. <laughs> so the Sycamores with the momentum and a four-point lead. Wow. Strong move, Chris Harris. And that brings Chris Bamba off the bench for the Aces. Bomba came in and did the job in the second half against Sam Houston State on Wednesday night. After with a long three-pointer, the Aces, unlike their first two starts, are not hitting the well here. And once again, Mr. Moore with a big rebound. A traveling call, the Aces will get it back. Steve Bennett shouting some instructions to Chris Bomba, who comes in for Brian Hill. I think what the Aces are looking for here, Mike, is rebounding, and uh, Chris Bamba gave it to him the other night. Had seven, I believe, didn't he? Or he, he came in and got—he came in and only got three rebounds, but he was moving people out of the way. Uh, Tracy Pearson is a guy who was guarding, who was six eight, two eighty. So Ue, a little cold here. Hafner looks out, flares out to Simmons. Down low. Boy, they're really banging. Jackson couldn't get it. Under 12 minutes in the first half. Aces down, 16-10. And a foul on number 40. Pushing off on Larry Bush. Bush got Brand out in front of him. Larry trying to, trying to front him and uh, just, just pushed him off. And that's Bush's second foul. And here comes the big guy, Dean Oliphant. Out of Jay, Oklahoma, and when Dean says big, he means big. Seven-footer. He played at Danville Community College over in Illinois. Averaged 18 points and nine rebounds. We're coming back in a moment. Aces trail 16-10 at the 11:45 mark. We'll be right back.
Kenny Kent Chevrolet Mazda Volvo presents a consumer awareness announcement. Your sales tax deduction is slipping away. December 31st, 1986 will be the last day you can purchase a new or used car, truck, or custom van and deduct the sales tax. Depending on model selected, your sales tax deduction could be as much as $1,500. If you've been thinking about purchasing a vehicle, Kenny Kent asks you to stop by today and look at their extensive selection and take advantage of the sales tax deduction. Because when it's gone... When cooler weather sends the Holland Dairy Kids indoors, they enjoy delicious, nutritious Holland products and treats. Kyle's a Holland festive dip and chip man. Crystal loves cold, refreshing Holland milk with cookies. Ashley thinks Holland ice cream is a real treat. And Betsy is a Holland fruit punch fan. And what do the Holland kids have to say? Happy holidays! All the dairy should be Holland dairy. Aces fans come in all shapes, all sizes, and all ages, Dean. That cute little guy is, uh, he could probably care less, but he looks like he's content, huh? Never never too young to be an Aces fan. A lot of them out here. Only uh, 6,500 on Wednesday night. Kind of a disappointing crowd, but I guess for a Wednesday night, maybe you'd expect it. A lot more than that here tonight. Chris Bombo will bring it in to Sc Scott Hafner. The Aces have their work cut out for them. They trail 16-10. But a lot of time remains here in the first half. ISU came in with a good reputation for strong athletic ability, and they've displayed it here in the early going. Curtis Jackson from the corner. That's Curtis Jackson's job. Come in and lift the offense, and he certainly did it tonight with uh, that jump shot. Jackson shooting 50% has his first basket of the night. Twitty being worked on by, and it's lost. Fine defense by Scott Hafner. In a hurry to Jackson. Up he goes. Too far, but he gets it back. To Simmons in the paint. He loses it and is controlled by ISU. Play is starting to get a little physical inside. Twitty, he can motor. Controlled by UE. Bamba looks up, but no break. Here comes the here come the aces Hafner Larry Brand wanted to put it up Hafner over three from three-point range so it might be a while before he takes another Simmons but again blue jerseys pull it down ten and a half minutes to go in the first half ISU with the lead and the ball 16 12 this is Twitty Simmons with the rebound came in shooting very respectably they're shooting 65 percent from the field and 83 percent from the free throw line bomba across to simmons short pass. simmons looks maybe a little tired doesn't he he looks like he's forcing his shot a little bit i think they need to try to work marty inside a little more the shot the short shot missed by Applewhite. So now becoming a little bit of a track meet. I think this is an important time down the floor for the Aces. They need to get a bucket here. And a foul on Tony Twitty. Twitty's very aggressive, both on the offensive end and the defensive end. Uh, last time on the offensive end, we saw him force up a shot, and, and the coaching staff said that he might tend to force him a little bit. He did that time. He forced it on the defense and committed kind of a silly foul. You really don't want your point guard committing those kind of fouls. That's his first personal. The team's fifth. They're still not on the one and one Adderley, Richie Adderley, out of the Bahamas, number 15. He's just a freshman. The book on him is he is a shooter. We shall see. Aces again trying to chip away at a 16 to 12 lead. Jackson, quick move, up he goes. He gets it away from Applewhite, who had the rebound, but it's stolen from him. Adderley has it. Nice speed, and this is Harris with the dunk. So Chris Harris has already got his average eight points. Nine minutes to go in the first half, and the Aces struggling here, 
Bamba down low. Nice pass in the paint. Marty Simmons. That's where they're trying to get Marty the ball, and that's where Marty needs to get the ball to be effective. Simmons came in shooting just under 50%, 47%, but Marty has not hit 50% thus far tonight. The Aces as a team are shooting off the mark. Four. Big tip. Simmons gets the rebound. They're going to have their work cut out all night long on the boards, aren't they? I look for Jeff Morning maybe to come in as Scott Hafner puts one up. Up and in. Hafner with his fourth point. And now it's a two-point ISU lead. Aces back within two. But not for long. Larry Bush asserts himself with his first basket. He's averaging 10 points a game. And he's actually shooting better from the free throw line than he is from the field. Or from the field from the free throw line. He's shooting 58%. Last year, UE set a record for futility at the Hellman Center. They had only 42 points in the loss. Bamba down to Jackson, and a foul. And he's pointing to the big guy, Dean Oliphant. People have asked, is he any relation to the Oliphant of L&M? I do not believe so. This kid is an Oklahoma native. Jeff Oliphant now at uh, Indiana University. That's Oliphant's first foul. Here comes Haddock. Scott Hafner, the Iron Man, who's played every minute. He's played all 80 in the first two games. He came over for some last-minute instructions. You see him on the top of your screen as Curtis Jackson goes to the line. And tonight, for the first time, we see, we see UE manning their positions on the foul line. Just over seven and a half minutes remaining, and the Aces trail by three points, 20 to 17. Kevin Haddock in. Curtis Jackson comes out, and we're going to take a timeout. We're coming back to the stadium. The Sycamores lead it 20 to 17. Evansville's old post office is as solid today as it was 100 years ago. When you do things right, they last. At Old National, we do things right, too. We have been since 1834, and that's why we've been around longer than any other bank in town. With Old National, you'll never have to worry about your money, ever, because we're solid today, and we'll be solid tomorrow. Old National, Old National. Christmas is a very special season, a time for family and friends, a time to reflect upon the past year. Christmas is a time for sharing. At this Christmas, the folks at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar Food Stores would like to remind you that the greatest gift of all is the gift of friendship. Thanks for being our friends this past year and in the years to come. Here's our wish to you for the most joyous and blessed Christmas ever from all of us at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar Food Stores. Reasons why the Sycamores are up very comfortably here, 2017. This is where Chris Harris gets to show his jumping ability. Slam dunk over Larry Brand off the fast break. Pro football back in the spotlight tomorrow night. Again, as you look at some cute young fans here at the stadium, tomorrow afternoon at noon here on 14, Miami and New Orleans, followed by the Jets and 49ers. Again, for sports, come home to WFIE TV Channel 14. Mike Blake along with Dean Webster, and she is a cutie. We could use her jumping ability. <laughs> So here comes ISU. They lead 2017, just under seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Richie Adderley takes it down. Nice dish off, and again, Mr. Harris up off the floor like he's on a trampoline, and he has 10 points, leading all scores. The Aces are standing in there trying to take that charge, but these Sycamores have very good body control and step out of the way, pass it off, and get the easy bucket. Applewhite gets it. And the official says he touched the line. It'll go back to UE. The Aces are definitely confused on offense. They cannot get the ball inside except for uh, a couple of times. 
to, to Haddock when he was when he's been in there and he's back in there now. Maybe they should start looking for Kevin inside because the Sycamore's really keying on Marty Simmons inside. Seem to be packing it in a bit. And again, the Sycamores, as Jim Cruz said, they're they're not that tall, but they play tall. Marty Simmons on a pretty fadeaway. That's where Marty Simmons has got to receive the ball. That's just his sixth point, but he's had to work for those. Twitty, nice feet again and a foul on Larry Brand, number 44. The Aces cannot continue to let the Sycamores get that kind of penetration. You see him driving the baseline. That is just a no-no. And uh, Brand was called for the foul. Could have been called on Simmons. Coach Jim Cruz up uh, telling Kevin Haddock uh, in, in college, we do not give away the baseline. The Sycamores, that is the sixth Aces foul, on, according to the board. After this, they will be in the shooting one and one. So Harris will inbound the ball. Aces trail by three. Back out to Harris. He has had a very good first half. He's the leading point maker, 10 points. He's directing traffic right now. 25 seconds on the shot clock. A lot of time. Oliphant loses it to Larry Brand. Brand might have got away with a travel right before he gave it away. He took a little shuffle step. Simmons, nice pass to Brand. And Larry with his first contribution. He'd missed a couple, then he gets one. The freshman out of Wheaton Central in Illinois. Very steady. Does a lot of things well. And a turnover. Kevin Haddock causes Adderley to turn it over. The Aces will get it back and can now regain the lead. They trail 22-21. I wouldn't characterize the Aces' play as poor so far, but they have not especially been playing well. They have not played as well as they have in the first two games, yet they're only a point behind, and they can take the lead with five minutes to go in the half. That was Ron Green who's taken his coat off, the Terre Haute native. Now the coach, and a three-pointer, Scott Hefner. And suddenly this crowd is alive here and doing well. Thank you at the stadium. Aces lead it 24-22. Blocked by Hafner. Boy, did he get off the pine. The crowd's starting to get into it a little bit. Seven straight points reeled off by the Aces. Harris, or rather Applewhite. This is Harris down low. The ball goes out of bounds. It'll be retained by ISU. Getting much better defense on the inside now. I think that's that's going to be the key to stop Indiana State is to get uh, not not letting the the uh, the point guards to, to pressure the ball inside, and then once it gets inside to play the tough defense. There have been many great Indiana State Evansville matchups here at the stadium. People will remember 78-79 when a guy named Bird had 40 points in 40 minutes. The first year the Aces went Division One, they won it by the score of 74 to 70, ISU did. The ball batted around and controlled and a foul on Richie Adderley. And the stadium is rocking. Ace is doing much better on the boards tonight, even though uh, that was a long rebound. You saw two aces going after it. Hafner knew he couldn't get it, but he tips it up in the air there. He says, I'm not going to let Adderley get it. And then Kevin Haddock pulls it down. Credit Scott Hafner with keeping it here. We're coming back in a moment. Aces on top by two. Just for the light of it. The smooth taste of it. Christmas is a very special season, a time for family and friends, a time to reflect upon the past year. Christmas is a time for sharing. At this Christmas, the folks at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar food stores would like to remind you that the greatest gift of all is the gift of friendship. Thanks for being our friends this past year and in the years to come. Here's our wish to you for the most joyous and blessed Christmas ever 
from all of us at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar Food Stores. Aces back on the court with a two-point lead. 4.35 remaining in the first half. What do you think really turned it around the last couple of minutes, Dean? Defense. I definitely think it's the defense uh, for, the, for the Aces. 56% uh, shooting for Indiana State, but they missed their last couple of shots. It was probably up over 60. I think definitely defense inside. And uh, they're not allowing the penetration by the point guards. Twitty, uh, sitting on the bench, has not been a factor as we thought he might be, averaging 19 points a game. Uh, don't believe he's even hit the scoring column. And Kevin Haddock will now go to the line. Six points. Played on the Columbus, Ohio state champion team last year out of Father Worley High School. A team that wound up number 19 in the nation by the end of the year. Fine looking athlete who puts in his first free throw attempt. He gives the Aces a three point lead. And again, going up for the strong rebound, Larry Bush. He, he leads the team with eight rebounds, and he had 16 the other night at Ball State. Applewhite. They wanted a traveling call. That's, that's what brought Jim Cruz up off the bench. Down low, Moore on the turnaround. Lee Moore, out of Brevard Community College in Cocoa, Florida. Came to ISU a couple of years ago, went to Juco ball, and it now is back. Ace is still with a two-point lead. We go under four minutes here in the first half. Hafner down low and a foul. Simmons draws a crowd and a foul. He's awfully tough to stop when, they, when he gets the ball in the paint, when he receives it there, he's awfully tough. You can see Hafner with the misdirection, throws it inside. Harris has got his hands full as Bush comes over to, to block it, but he's a little late. And now the Aces go back and take all four men and put them at the 10 second line. The reason is simply because they do not figure they're gonna get the rebound. Simmons is a good free throw shooter and it saves these four out here a time up and down the floor as I jinx Simmons and he misses. That foul, by the way, was on Chris Harris, their best defensive player, according to the media guide and coach Ron Green, has one foul tonight. The Sycamores can regain the lead here. Ball lost by Moore. Now they'll come back out. About 20 seconds on the shot clock. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Simmons, nice steal. Marty breaks it up. He'll go all the way. And a foul. He draws the foul, but the ball just would not go. Boy, Simmons really moved, didn't he? Marty's had uh, kind of a tough time getting on track in the first couple of games, but he seems once he gets on track, he's been playing very well. There you see the aces, and here's the replay. Came up with a good steal, just stepped right in front of Moore, takes it one-on-one -on -one against Adderley, and he's either going to get the bucket and maybe both as he puts it up and it just rimmed out. And Marty goes back to the free throw line. So Marty, who came in shooting 92%, he had 13 of 14 from the line coming into tonight. Gets the roll this time. Nice touch. And Marty with his seventh point. What, a, what an incredible career this young man had for the Lawrenceville Indians. One of the best to ever come out of Illinois as they won two state championships. It's well chronicled, of course, in this part of the country as Hafner with a steal. The, Aces. Aces, the Aces defense coming up again with a big play. They'll try now to add to their three-point lead. We're almost under three minutes. Hafner, nice pass. <laughs> Traveling call. Marty can't believe how wide open he was. He turned around and tried to make a little move, and there wasn't anybody there. He could have just laid it in. Jim Cruz says, that's okay, good play. As long as you play hard, that's all Jim Cruz asks of you. Deion Campbell being worked on by Kevin Haddock. The Aces, of course, will not only have a big game tonight as Mr. Applewhite hits from the corner, they've got another great rivalry resuming. You can underline the world rivalry Monday night when the Panthers from Kentucky Wesleyan come over. We'll tell you more about that later in the ball game. Brand back out to Hafner. Aces still by a bucket, by a point rather, 27-26. Simmons for three. Cleared by Bush. 
I don't think Jim Cruz was too happy about that shot selection. You almost really need your feet planted, don't you, when you go for that three? Yeah, that's that's a pretty good shot. Even, you know, even though they say it's just a nice, easy jump shot, you got to have your feet under you to be a very consistent three-point shooter. And Lee Moore upset. He drew three aces around him and then traveled. So Yui gets it back. We're under two minutes. A minute 57 to go in the first half. Evansville leading 27-26. into underneath the Simmons three play. What a pass. They know that Scott Hafner is the key to the offense. They put one guy on him real tight that time, and then when he got around him, there was another waiting for him. Campbell was waiting for him. So Marty warms up. He's got 10 points. The Aces have 29. More on the turnaround. And a foul on Chris Bamba. They are not shy putting it up, are they? No, they're not. Chris Bomb is going to get those fouls. He's a banger in here. And he, he, Chris is not blessed with great quickness and just shoves a little bit on that one. And uh, Apple White will go to the line. And Tony Twitty and Benji Frazier come in while why Dion Campbell and Lee Moore come out for ISU. We played almost uh, we played almost 19 minutes. And the 19.3 points per game from Tony Twitty has been nullified to zero. No points for him as he comes back in. Meanwhile, Mr. Applewhite gets his seventh point. Applewhite only had made uh, a couple of free throws, but he'd only had two free throws. He was perfect from the line coming in. And he's perfect tonight, two, two for two. 29-28 UE with a minute 19 when this ball is inbounded. Mike Blake along with Dean Webster from the stadium. Aces basketball. U ISU leads the series 59 to 47. They've also won nine of the last 11 meetings. So UE really wants to start turning that, that type of series around. Bamba dribbling and gets the foul from Larry Bush. Bush doesn't need to pick up those kind of fouls that far away from the from the basket, and I'm sure Ron Green will will mention that to him. That will bring him out, I would think. That's his third foul. They notify the bench. And Ron, Ron Green looking for somebody now. And he he points to number 41, Olafemi Akinola. He's known as OK at the Holman Center. The kid is OK. He's a Nigerian who played at the age of 14 with a guy named Akeem Olajuwon. Yeah, the great Houston, the University of Houston player, now with the Houston Rockets. Bamba misses, so we're down to a minute. It remains a 29-28, a very precarious one-point lead for the Aces. Boy, Twitty saw somebody or something that no one else saw. And Yui gets it back. And the Yui cheering section comes out with an air ball. Scott Hacker just looked over and said, one shot with 50 seconds left. Jim Cruz looked at the clock and said, nope, run your offense. Marty Simmons. Both teams have had their chances here in the first half. Hackner with a strong drive. And it's off. Scott Hefner wanted it off Harris, but it'll go to ISU, and they'll have just under a half a minute, 29 seconds as they bring it up. 29, 28 aces. Rebound by Akinola. He can't get it. A whistle and a foul. He's pointing at Bamba. Akinola got in there and did a good job on the boards. There he puts it up with the left hand, a little hard, goes up and gets it. Bamba trying to contest that, uh, but Akinola, the great jumping ability, goes up and grabs it. In comes Curtis Jackson, now in comes Troy Jones. As Haddock and Bamba will sit out the last 11 seconds of the half. 
Well, with 11 seconds, you figure uh, even if he doesn't hit the free throws, you get the rebound, you get it out, and you've got shooters in there. This is Akinola's seventh free throw. He's only hitting 33%. And again, the Aces get a reprieve, but they don't get the rebound. Turn around, rebound by Jackson. They'll have to hurry. Five seconds. Jackson loses it. Simmons can't, and that's how it'll end at halftime. At the half here at Roberts Municipal Stadium, it's the U of E 29, ISU 28. We'll be right back. Kenny Kent Chevrolet Mazda Volvo presents a consumer awareness announcement. Your sales tax deduction is slipping away. December 31st, 1986 will be the last day you can purchase a new or used car, truck, or custom van and deduct the sales tax. Depending on model selected, your sales tax deduction could be as much as $1,500. If you've been thinking about purchasing a vehicle, Kenny Kent asks you to stop by today and look at their extensive selection and take advantage of the sales tax deduction. Because when it's gone, Christmas is a very special season, a time for family and friends, a time to reflect upon the past year. Christmas is a time for sharing. At this Christmas, the folks at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar food stores would like to remind you that the greatest gift of all is the gift of friendship. Thanks for being our friends this past year and in the years to come. Here's our wish to you for the most joyous and blessed Christmas ever from all of us at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar food stores. Have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. You know what I want for my brother? A bike. I wish I could have a rabbit. I would like to fly. Daddy, from cologne. And Mama, from perfume. I wish I could be a hockey star. May all your wishes come true. Season's greetings from your local bottler of Coca-Cola. At Old National Bank, the buck stops with Margot Edwards. Here in Eastland Mall, fast service counts. That's what you'll get with Old National. Because I can make my own decisions, you don't get stuck waiting around. The buck stops with Bill Forkey. My customers like working with someone they know. With Old National, they do. Banking here is one-on-one. -on -one. It's just you and it's just me. Now, isn't that the way it ought to be? Old National. Once again here at Roberts Stadium, while they're splishing and splashing in the background, the Aces went into the locker room 29-28. Interesting ball game. I think the Aces didn't play quite as well as they did in the first two games in the first half, at least. I think the uh, the defense the defense picked up a little bit. They stopped the penetration from Adderley and Twitty, and but then early on it was the inside shots from Frazier and Harris uh, had a bundle. He had 10 early points. And I think once they stop that, that's when the Aces got a little more in control of the game. And when they took the lead, they now lead by one at the half. While shutting down, Mr. Twitty, I know that Jim Cruz is going to say, hey, these guys are getting too many rebounds, or at least it looks like it. They're definitely hitting the boards and out rebounding like uh, everybody else has with the Aces right now. Aces have trouble rebounding against themselves in practice, I think. About the shooting, uh, who's impressed you UE-wise offensively, Dean? Well, I think Kevin Haddock, obviously. Kevin has worked free inside. Uh, I think they're going to have to get the ball to Larry Brand and uh, maybe get either Brian Hill or Jeff Morning a little more involved in the offense, get Morning into the game. But I think that's what they're going to have to look for because they're putting a lot of pressure on Marty Simmons and they're putting a lot of pressure on Scott Hacker. It's going to be fun. Second half coming up. But first, we'll have halftime stats right after this.
Come home to Wheel of Fortune weeknights at 6.30. have five more. We take a look at some of the other team stats and the uh, Aces still not sh uh, shooting very well uh, from the from the field. 12 of 27. Officially it was 12 of 30. Only 40 percent. They uh, continue to have a pretty tough time of it from the three point land. One of seven. Only 50 percent from the free throw. Uh, and the turnovers, only two for the Aces, and officially Indiana State ended up with 10. Uh, the Aces came up with six steals, and that's basically where the turnovers came about. That Aces defense finally took over, and that's why the Aces lead 29-28 at the half. And speaking of the score, scoring-wise, Simmons, and uh, who are some of the big leaders? Well, Scott Hafner has continued to uh, have his shooting problems in the first half, as he did Wednesday night, but Simmons leads the way with 10. Hafner and Kevin Haddock, the guy that started to guard, kind of a surprise starter, didn't see action against Montana State in the first game on Monday night, came in and only played five or six minutes in a starting role on Wednesday, and getting the start here on Saturday night, came up with seven points. He's got a couple of fouls. He's the only ace in trouble. Uh, Curtis Jackson came in, gave him a lift, even though only, only that, that's only three points. That was a lift when he came in, hit a big bucket, and got the Aces back on track. Larry Brand came up with a couple. Harris leads the way for Indiana State. Chris Harris with 12 points. He came in only averaging eight points, so uh, he's got his average and then some. Say there's interesting news for Aces fans who want to purchase tickets by December 15th for the Midwestern Collegiate Conference Tournament in Indianapolis. If you do so by the 15th, you'll be guaranteed an equal number of tickets for the following week's NCAA Tournament at the Hoosier Dome. The MCC Tournament takes place at the end of February, the 26th, 27th, and also March 1st at Market Square. Now, the first and second rounds, the sub-regional of the NCAA, will take place March 12th and 14th at the Hoosier Dome. Tickets for the six-game MCC tournament are priced at $25. Tickets for the six-game NCAA tournament are $45 for lower-level lower level seats and $36 for upper-level. They're on their feet as you see the Sycamores getting their last-minute instructions. U of E leading here 29-28 in what has been a very well-played basketball game. Ron Green, as I mentioned, a native of Terre Haute, he's come full circle. He coached at Loyola of New Orleans, University of New Orleans, Mississippi State, Murray State, and now he's come back to his hometown. He played at Gertzmeyer for the legendary Howard Sharp. He was a three-year starter at Murray and graduated there in 62. And he has been a very successful head coach. He's won everywhere he's went, and he's winning here at Indiana State. 3-0 this year, but the Aces under second-year head, second head coach Jim Cruz would like to change that tonight. Good ball game, Dean. Pretty good ball game. Uh, some other teams in action tonight from the MCC. Loyola's at home with South Carolina. Detroit plays Wayne State. Butler and Ball State. Northern Iowa at St. Louis. And Oral Roberts at home with UC Irvine. So here we go. Sycamores inbounded. It goes to Chris Harris, who led with 12 points, led ISU in the first half. Stolen by Brian Hill, and he traveled. Jim Cruz very pleased with the effort. But Brian took a couple of bitty steps there, and it goes back to Indiana State. Troy Jones in the lineup, number 12. Frazier is fouled by Hafner. I think uh, that's a bad call. And Jim Cruz did not like it, and I concur with him. Frazier went up, at, just lost the ball. He just lost the ball, and it rolled down his wrist, and uh, Hafner reached up and knocked the ball away. And I think Jim Cruz probably got a pretty good beef as we see the ball going up after the shot. The fouls on Hafner. Scott not very happy with that. Frazier goes to the line. He's only had one free throw attempt this year prior to that. And it remains tied at 29 all. But again, ISU gets the rebound. Frazier with five points on the night. This is Twitty. He's had a tough night. And Larry Brand controls the board. Half 
Buckner and Jones out front. Brand has played virtually the entire game. Hafner needs help. Troy Jones, in 31 minutes playing time in the first two games, has not had a turnover, a very impressive statistic. Hafner is open from the corner. Three-point play by Scott Hafner. Well, they're going to put Troy Jones in there, have Troy run the, the offense from outside and make Scott more of a shooting guard. Hafner, Jones, and Simmons have the green light to shoot from anywhere within reason. Twitty gets it down, a nice... I was going to say block from Brian Hill, but he gets the foul. So the Baltimore Dunmar product picks up his third personal. He has not scored yet. You asked him, why would a guy from Baltimore want to come all the way to Evansville to play basketball? And he told you. Simply said academics. I know when I come to Evansville. They have a good reputation for academics, and I know I'm going to get my degree if basketball is not in my future. So uh, what a class kid. And that's what kind of kind of kids Jim Cruz recruits. He recruits, recruits class kids. They're in Applewhite. Doesn't get it to go the, from the free throw line, and it remains 32-30. The ball goes off. Benji Frazier and UE will get it back. Delighted to have you with us in this, our inaugural telecast of Aces Basketball on 14. We hope you'll be with us again Monday night. We'll bring you the Panthers of Kentucky Wesleyan as one of the great rivalries will resume. The biggest crowd, some three of the four largest crowds to ever see a game here at the stadium were between UE and Wesleyan. And a foul on Marty Simmons. Well, I think Jim Cruz is having a little problem with this one official. It is not like the call again. Let's take a look at it. Might have been a good call. Let's see. Marty loses the ball. Twitty picks it up. And right there, well, I don't know. <laughs> you make the call. <laughs> Jim, Jim Cruz is making it. He says, he says it was a clean steal. He was pleading his case. That is Marty's first foul. Simmons with his first personal. We played just about two minutes here in the second half. Aces by two points, 32-30. Frazier wanting to... Some help gets it back out to Twitty. They have put a blanket on Twitty, still looking for his first points. He's averaging 19. He tries to go to Frazier. Hafner saves it back to Twitty. Down to Frazier and the basket. Benji Frazier with his seventh point. Just before the half and a foul on Darian Applewhite. They've got Applewhite, a little bigger guy out on Hafner now here in the second half. That's two on him. Incidentally, just before the half, I started to say Steve Bennett went out and gave explicit instructions to Troy Jones. I'm impressed with the, you know, all the assistants have their certain roles and they, they have the, the license to, to coach. Yeah, I think when we uh, went to practice one night on a Sunday evening, we were very impressed with how the, the assistants handled handled practice and again Marty Simmons having problems catching the ball Marty upset with himself as it stays 32 all and 20 and Harris will bring it up court that's Hafner working on 20 20 saying he's he's really being Guarded well tonight, and a foul on Larry Brand. Ron Green motions now. He wants to talk to Twitty. That's the fourth team foul by the Aces, second foul by Larry Brand. Hasn't been much breathing room for either team. Indiana State's biggest lead, six. The Aces, three. As you see, Brand committing the foul there. Sycamore spreading it around. The ace is in a zone. Oh, right, I was just going to say it certainly looks like a zone. Twitty comes around to the other side. Marty Simmons with a rebound. Up to Hafner. Now, Jones, beautiful pass. 
to Brian Hill. Troy Jones with an excellent pass. Troy had his shot. Brian Hill snuck along the baseline, got it, and put it in for two. And timeout is called. 16 and a half minutes remaining. We're coming back. Aces, 34-34. Kenny Kent Chevrolet Mazda Volvo presents a consumer awareness announcement. Your sales tax deduction is slipping away. December 31st, 1986 will be the last day you can purchase a new or used car, truck, or custom van and deduct the sales tax. Depending on model selected, your sales tax deduction could be as much as $1,500. If you've been thinking about purchasing a vehicle, Kenny Kent asks you to stop by today and look at their extensive selection and take advantage of the sales tax deduction. Because when it's gone, Christmas is a very special season, a time for family and friends, a time to reflect upon the past year. Christmas is a time for sharing. At this Christmas, the folks at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar food stores would like to remind you that the greatest gift of all is the gift of friendship. Thanks for being our friends this past year and in the years to come. Here's our wish to you for the most joyous and blessed Christmas ever from all of us at the Red and White and Lucky Dollar food stores. UE with a 34-32 lead. Some nice play here, Dean Webster. Mike, you said Troy Jones doesn't turn the ball over, and he also makes assist Ryan Hill with the almost stufferino. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Jones, indeed, out of Muncie, Indiana. Very fine talent. Played for the Daleville Broncos. Last year was an all-freshman team member, and he led these aces in shooting and free throw as Ron Green has certainly been a very busy man tonight for Murray State. We talked at halftime uh, offensively that we would need some more offensive punch. Brian Hill coming up at the bucket there. Now Jeff Morning into the ball game. Get a little better rebounder and a pretty good shooter. So ISU again will try to tie the ball game. They trail 32-30 and they do right out of the shoot. Benji Frazier. He now has nine points. He prepped at Springfield, Illinois, and of course had a very fine career with the Warriors of Wabash Valley. Jones with his first shot off of Simmons, I believe, and a foul is called. Foul on Chris Harris. That's his second personal. The Aces will inbound it under their basket. We're tied at 34 all, approaching the 16 minute mark in the game. And Marty Simmons, he has that quick first step, and boy, he moves. Marty will come right at you. Let's take another look at it off the inbounds play. You see Marty get it, and Frazier stepping right in front there, picking up the foul. That's Frazier's first personal, so he's in good shape. Here it's to Jeff Morning. Hafner is a very fine passer. Here he is with a shot, short. Fails to draw iron, and here come the Sycamores. Twitty, offensive charge on Tony Twitty. Tony Twitty has to be the most frustrated player in the building right now. He just cannot get on track. He'll be happy to get on the bus. Yeah, he? he certainly will. Averaging 19.3 points a game. Tries to make something happen here. And Troy Jones was, was waiting on him, and that's what happened. A charging foul on Tony Twitty. And it's Troy that brings it across. Shouting instructions. thing we have not seen tonight is the pressure that we saw at Montana State and Sam Houston State and Larry Brand puts it in. Did that surprise you we haven't seen the full, you know, court, full court pressure? They, they put token pressure on a couple of times in the first half but once they got the ball in bounds they backed off. We may see him come at the aces real hard maybe at about the uh, eight or ten minute mark. Tony Twitty again being hounded by Scott Hafter who's done a great job tonight. From the side, rebound Simmons. Under 15 minutes remaining. Aces leading 36-34. And there's the Brown Town Central product. Jeff Morning has had a fine preseason. He's another one of the young aces that people are going to like. They're going to like them all, but these he has really been impressive. Down to 15 seconds on the shot clock. 
Jones down to Simmons. Ball is knocked out. It'll go to ISU, and Marty Simmons picks himself up. He plays one speed, and it's it is great to watch this kid play. If he can stay healthy, it'll be the it'll be a wonderful two years, and particularly for a lot of people in Southern Illinois that are thrilled that he's back playing in this area. Certainly will be. And a whistle. And a foul. They're pointing. Look like they Simmons. Simmons. And that'll bring Curtis Jackson in. You notice the Aces the last time down the floor offensively took a lot of time. I think uh, I think they're trying to rest a little bit. Let's see if Simmons does walk out a little too much there. You can see him shoving Bush as Bush tries to get around Marty. 22, Benji Frazier with the missed shot. There's Marty taking a seat, so the captain goes down and sits next to Coach Dave Skavinsky. You see the coach there, he and Will Ray seeing a lot more games this year because they don't have to do so much recruiting. And I know Coach Cruz appreciates that as the ball, they get the roll. Benji with the basket. And now he's starting to pick up. He has 11 points and it's tied again. 13, 36-36, 13-52 remaining. Last year it was a defensive struggle at the Holman Center, 51-42. It's not going to be any big score tonight either. Morning tries to get it to Curtis Jackson, knocked out by Deion Campbell. On Wednesday night when they took Marty Simmons out, the offense didn't miss a beat. In fact, they'd even picked up a little bit. Marty Simmons on the bench. Let's see what's going to happen tonight. This is Larry Brand. That's what happens. Larry Brand is a great baseline shooter. Young man had a start of the first four games last year, then the, the heartbreak of a stress fracture in his foot, and he missed the season, but he's got four years of eligibility, and are the Aces fans delighted with that? And he injured his foot in the Indiana State game last Ooh. year. <laughs> uh, here's a substitute, Moore, coming in for the Sycamores. Scott Hafner with his second personal. Ron, Ron Green sending some reserves in, trying to give his kids a breather. Applewhite tries to tie it, and he does. Ron Green wants a three-pointer called on that one, but I think his foot was on the line. 38-38. Again, you've got some real good long-distance firepower. Hafner and Troy Jones. Marty Simmons is on the pines right now. Morning, trying to get his feet. Curtis in traffic. And it's cleared off by Lee Moore. Moore has been impressive on the boards. Here's Quitty in a hurry. And an offensive charge on Twitty. He has really, as you mentioned, been a frustrated individual. Twitty cannot believe it, and I'm not so sure that the replay might not say he's got a pretty good beef. Let's see. No, looks like Troy might have got over there in time. Could have gone either way, but the foul this time's on Twitty. That's his third. Credit Mr. The always present Mr. Jones. The ever present Troy taking another charge. We go under 12 and a half minutes remaining. Tied up. Hafner at the line. <laughs> You know, it looks like he's off balance on that, but he turns so well and gets his shoulders square to the bucket. When he gets that shot, he's going to hit it. Born in Terre Haute, so he's playing his hometown team out of Noblesville. Twitty finally on the board. Kenny Kent Chevrolet Mazda Volvo presents a consumer awareness announcement. Your sales tax deduction is slipping away. December 31st, 1986 will be the last day you can purchase a new or used car, truck, or custom van and deduct the sales tax. Depending on model selected, your sales tax deduction could be as much as $1,500. If you've been thinking about purchasing a vehicle, Kenny Kent asks you to stop by today and look at their extensive selection and take advantage of the sales tax deduction. Because when it's gone,
leading 42 to 41. Jeff Cooper comes in. What's the book on him? Jeff Cooper likes to put it up from three-point range. He's had 13 shots from the field. Nine of them have come from the three-point range, and he's hit four of them. So a 44% three-point shooter is not bad. He's only shooting 46% from the field, so you can see uh, that he's not bad, but he, he likes that three-point range. Four of five from the uh, free-throw line, 80%. You see Curtis stealing it and then stepping on the out-of-bounds line. Again, the other night, uh, for those of you who were not at the stadium, uh, Curtis Jackson gave Aces fans a scare. He left uh, left the game and was on the bench, and I, I honestly didn't couldn't recognize him uh, from the allergy that had broken out. It looked like a twin brother that uh, maybe just had, had a, you know, it, it just looked big. His right. face was swollen, and uh, they called it an allergic reaction or hives. I don't think right. they were ever really sure what it was. He's taking medicine for his back, and I think they think it was a reaction to the medicine, but uh, you can be sure they've changed the medicine or found out the history because they they can't afford to lose him aces trainer steve dayton no doubt right on top of that that little problem and uh, jim cruz i would sure say uh steve let's get that medicine changed we need him in there there you see moments ago you saw ron green jim cruz has his entire cabinet here tonight the very fine coaching staff of will ray woody wilson steve bennett and dave skavinsky and as we said before they contribute and these guys they work they work and work and work. We mentioned uh, Will Ray and Dave Skabinski last year spent an awful lot of time on the road recruiting and recruited four very good freshmen. This year, uh, with no seniors graduating, things spend a little more time at home. 11 and a half minutes remaining. Aces by one. Mike Blake along with Dean Webster. Delighted to be with you with our first telecast of Aces 86-87. The ball thrown away. Curtis Jackson with some fine defense. And UE will bring it up. Deion Campbell got handcuffed over there in the corner, and Marty Simmons came over to help out. This is Cooper with the thigh bandage, guarding Troy Jones. He gets it, gets it to Simmons. He goes up. Marty, Marty's one of those gifted athletes that can create can create things there again he, he probably didn't think he had much of a shot but he still threw a box still put it up when Mar that's where Marty has to get the ball he has to get it in the paint you see he turns he gets Frazier up in the air he's trying to draw the three-point play he knows he's going to get fouled so he goes up tries to make contact and then kind of set himself a little bit and then get the ball off but Frazier fouled him so well <laughs> that's uh that it really knocked him off balance as again the aces other four stand at the 10 second line as Marty goes to the free throw line and hits it. Marty looking for his first second half point and gets it. He's got 11 unofficially on the night. Came in shooting 93% from the stripe. Had a couple of free throws in the first half. He's short on this one. So the Aces maintain a 43 41 advantage as we come to the 11 minute mark. And it goes off the foot. Ran with a nice save, but it goes off the foot of Troy Jones. We had three guys in, the, in line for that one. Uh, Larry Brandt, Marty Simmons, and Troy Jones all trying to steal the ball. Again, the Aces fall back into that zone on the out-of-bounds play. From a long range, Darian Applewhite. Three-point play. And once again, the Sycamores back on top by a point. They lead 44-43. Jackson, Simmons. Strong rebound by Lee Moore and a foul on Jeff Morning. That's Morning's first personal. It's the ace of seven, so it'll send the Sycamores to the line. Here you see Morning going over the back of Moore. Moore, very, he's one of those Indiana Kentucky All Stars. He played on the Indiana All Stars a couple of years ago. Those of you who know the Fort Wayne basketball area. He took Elmhurst to the semi-state a couple of years ago. And he's the one that went down to Florida, didn't he? We, yeah. talk, we talked about that earlier, that uh, he was at Indiana State. Ron Green came in. I don't know if maybe he said, well, maybe Ron Green's not my kind of coach. He took a year and went to junior college. I guess he decided Ron Green was his kind of coach because he came back to Indiana State this year. Talk about coming in. Brian Hill under the basket right now comes in as Jeff Morning is out, and Lee Moore gives the Sycamores a 45 to 43 lead. Jim Cruz talks about positive minutes played. He said a lot of the kids don't get a, a lot of the players don't get a lot of minutes, but when they come in, they have to make positive contributions. Jeff Morning came in, really didn't do much for the Aces. Hill with the rebound. 
As expected, Harris covering Hafner. This is Simmons. Jackson can't quite get it off. Curtis moves with authority. Strong. Here's Hill. Ryan Hill in the right spot at the right time and has four points. That's what the Aces need out of those role players. They need them to get buckets like that. That's that's Brian Hill and Larry Brand's job. We're just about halfway through the second half. 10.05 to go, and it's tied 45 all. The Aces have already scored more points than they did last year at Terre Haute, so <laughs> that's encouraging. But this team this year is going to score a lot of points. If they can stay healthy, Curtis couldn't quite get his hand on it. Hill does, but it's retained. Frazier fans it out. Cooper down low. Nice play and a basket by Harris. Good, you know, ball, good ball movement. You know, you feel like if any either one of the teams really get in the flow, they could put the other one away, but uh, it hasn't happened so far. ISU by two. Grant back out to Hafner. Takes it down, up. Banged around, Cooper with a rebound. Cooper. Crowd wanted a traveling. Cooper, of course, wanted a foul, and Harris wants the basket, but it doesn't go. Frazier pushed Simmons off that time, no call. And it's kind of getting out of hand out there. The officials really need to get control. A lot of pushing and shoving going on, and they take control by calling a foul on Benji Frazier. Jim Cruz wants to talk to his troops as a foul is made. Benji Frazier picks up his third foul of the second half. Believe me, that was a one-way conversation. <laughs> there was no reply in that huddle. <laughs> so the four of the aces go back to midcourt while Marty Simmons will now go to work at the free throw line. He'll try to tie this ball game. That's the roll. Marty shooting 47% from the field. You know, they, they had a little problem with the ball early on. The first time out in the first half, they changed balls, and I don't know if they've, they've really got one of the players like yet. 13 points for Marty Simmons. He's been averaging 27. That's best in the MCC conference in free conference play. Nine minutes to go, and we're tied again. 47 all. The 107th meeting between these two fine universities. Moore on the turnaround. Lee Moore. That's pretty good defense. I think the uh, the coaching staff will, will let Moore take all those shots he wants. Once again, Hafner has been in there, I think, the entire the entire run. Simmons getting position, gets the foul. And two more blue jerseys come in. Bush and Twitty come in. Mike, this is a point in the game where, where some players start getting a little bit tired, but Marty Simmons, this is where he starts getting stronger. He's uh, he's almost like a, like a running back. They talk about those good running backs in the NFL. They get better after they've had 15 or 20 carries. Well, he gets a little stronger and a little better in the second half after he's been fouled a couple of times, and he's been to the free throw line a couple of times. But Marty can't get it to go. Chris Harris, incidentally, that was his third foul if you're keeping tabs. Hafner did go out earlier this half, momentarily, I'm told. Moore on the turnaround, and he's become a very big thorn in the Aces. As it's now a four-point ISU advantage. UE has to be careful as they bring it down at the almost the eight-minute mark. Big trip down the floor for the Aces, no doubt. Who do you go to in a crucial situation but your captain, and you give it to Marty Simmons, and that's the fourth foul on Chris Harris. And now the Sycamores are in some trouble because Harris has done a pretty good job on Simmons. Simmons coming off the pick. He's, he's looking to go into the paint. And Harris comes over, and you see him reach in right there. Marty kind of giving him a little shove. Marty having some trouble with the free throw line. They say his elbow is, is okay, but he still likes to wear that bandage. 
In high school, he used to wear, as many of the Lawrenceville fans know, he, I think he wore one on his left elbow. We, we talked to him about that the other day. We said, uh, well, you wore one in high school. He said, yeah, but that was on my left elbow. He said it feels good. Benji Frazier comes out, or comes in as Harris comes out with four fouls. I said Marty Simmons has had a little trouble. I guess seven for nine from the free throw line is trouble. <laughs> we could take that kind of trouble all year. Came in shooting very well from the line. And it's a 51-49 ball game. Timeout. Eight minutes to go, and it's 51-49 ISU. It's crowd on hand. Yes, indeed. Again, we don't have the official attendance. 8,500 was expected. Maybe a little more than that. I think maybe we might be pushing nine. We talked to the assistant athletic director, Mike Moore, about it, and he said he's hoping for 9,000 in here tonight. And, of course, a much bigger crowd than that expected on Monday night against Kentucky Wesleyan. We mentioned earlier, of course, Larry Bird, the greatest of the all-time greats from ISU. There is another Bird still at Terre Haute. Eddie Bird was recruited, but it was a victim of Proposition 48, and they tell me he is still on the campus. We'll try to get eligible academically, and they, they have a scholarship waiting for him next year. He's an exciting player, played on the Indiana All-Star team. Incidentally, the big gun for ISU, John Sherman Williams, is gone, uh, much to the Aces' relief. He is now playing in the CBA at Rockford. The next game for the Aces, Kentucky Wesleyan. And also, we'll be bringing you a game coming up. Here's the Moore bucket. Well, Moore has really come on as he's hit two in a row, and Lee Moore hitting the, hitting the bucket there. Six for 11 from the field, the Sycamores are here in the second half. The Aces, six of 12, 50%. Indiana State just a little bit better than that at about 53. I started to tell you that the Aces play couple other games next week they go to Wisconsin Green Bay for their first road test that will be on Thursday night that game will not be televised but we will bring you Austin P the governors and they must be something they they scared the daylights out of Kentucky a couple weeks ago they they, uh, they hit a uh, three-point play with just a few seconds left and got fouled so it was a four-point play they went from down three to up one and uh, it was Rex Chapman that came down dished it off to Irv Thomas for the winning bucket as Kentucky went ahead for good eight minutes to go and here comes ISU. They lead it 51-49. Both teams unbeaten. UE trying to go 3-0. ISU trying to improve to 4-0. ISU will host Butler on Monday night. The ball kicked out of bounds. It goes to UE. This has not been a very pretty game to watch. There's been a lot of mistakes, a lot of, a lot of steals, a lot of turnovers. You kind of expect that when you're in an emotional rivalry like this and early in the season. Not Al Abine, but I think I think both this is the this is the best matchup the Aces have had. So they probably, and it's the first Saturday night, they probably want to maybe do a little trying a little extra. That shot nowhere near the basket as again Twitty really lets it fly into the band. Well, we knew Twitty would force things a little bit, but that's what a point guard's supposed to do. He's supposed to force things. A point guard that doesn't make a turnover is probably not a very good point guard because he's got to make things happen out there, but you want him to make more positives than negatives. Hafner down the baseline. Strong move in the basket. Good move by Scott Hafner. Went outside, kind of went back door on that one, got Twitty looking the other way and put it in to tie the score. 14 points, very consistent. Seven in each half. Scott averaging 21. Seven minutes to go. Again, it's tied 51 all. Applewhite. Ran with a rebound. The Aces looked strong on the boards that time. They had one defensive player in the shooter's face and another one waiting for the rebound. Curtis Jackson moving quickly down to Simmons. And he double dribble. It goes back to ISU. Marty says, how can I double dribble on that? I never picked it up. Coach Cruz would like to see the Aces run their offense a little bit. He was uh, a little disgruntled that time when Hafner drove it down into the double pick, and I think there was supposed to be somebody, someone coming off that double low post. Under six and a half remaining. Benji Frazier block and a foul on Marty Simmons. What I think Indiana State's trying to do is run the offense a little bit, get a switch to a to a, uh, a smaller man on a big guy, and then look inside. Frazier goes up, and Marty gets him, well, maybe on the arm. Definitely got a piece of something. 
Benji Frazier, all region 24 with the Warriors of Wabash Valley. Goes 6-6, 203. So he and Simmons are a pretty good matchup. Height-wise, Marty has a few pounds on him. And you talked about Frazier playing for Wabash Valley and Coach Scott Rendell. But again, UE does not get the rebound. That seems to have happened several times tonight, Dean. They've, they've had trouble getting that ball off the off the defensive board. I think the rim sounds a little funny tonight. I don't know if those are new rims, but they sound a little funny. More. There's a lot of banging underneath. Twitty will try from the twilight. Simmons battling it around. Here's Applewhite, and Graham controls the rebound. The Aces had their hands on it a couple of times. Jim Crew is up yelling, and the crowd's starting to get into it a little bit. Big time.